Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Um, and since uh, it's a slow news day again, um, I thought I'd do another movie spotlight. It's been a bit. Uh, and since it's the month of October, I figured we would do a horror film. And this is one of kind of uh, Wes Craven's a bit more forgotten movies. Uh, it's called A Serpent in the Rainbow. And uh, it's, it's an extremely well done film. It's very different. Uh, from a lot of the stuff that Craven had been doing, uh, you know, at around that time, you know, we all knew about stuff like Last House on the Left, um, and, uh, well, that was in the 70s, but Last House on the Left and The Hills Have Eyes, which were both in the 70s, and then, of course, his, uh, you know, the, the work that most people know him for, which is Nightmare on Elm Street in 1984. Now, this movie came out in 1988. It was some years later, and he goes more for a psychological uh, film in this because a lot of it is very dreamlike um, in a lot of scenarios including uh, you know hallucinations and stuff by the main character who's played by Bill Pullman um, and Bill Pullman does a very good job in this movie he does a great job he's an anthropologist that uh, goes to Haiti uh, because he hears about this drug that supposedly turn you know supposedly manipulates people and turns them into zombies um, and we're not talking uh, you know the Romero zombies the eh, I want to eat your brain zombies we're talking actual zombies like what zombies were initially uh, when the, the phrase was coined uh, which were basically these mindless servants that served like this you know this uh, shaman in uh, Haitian culture and this is based on a book that is based on a true-ish story uh, about a man who was pronounced dead and then came back some years later claiming that he had been turned into a zombie uh, and that he had somehow broken free and escaped and that they have confirmed I believe that this man is the same one that was declared dead although it's not 100% sure how he got to where he was and how, where he's been for a number of years um, but that's initially what this is based off of. Um, but they do take it, obviously, in a, in a bit more of a fantastical direction. You know, Wes Craven adds the stuff with the, the black magic and stuff like that. And, you know, the, uh, the, the priests and the shamans and stuff like that. So um, they really do uh, kind of make you feel like this stuff is real um, in terms of, uh, you know, the way they present stuff. They, they present them more or less like, uh, you know, the bad guys in the film, they present them more or less kind of like... Um, a, you know, kind of like an organized crime syndicate or something like that. They operate kind of separately uh, from any kind of local governments or stuff like that. Um, and it's very interesting kind of to see that little bit of realism that's been kind of snuck into a movie that's about something that's fantastical. Um, and like I said, Bill Pullman does a great job in this movie. Um, you know, the, the he has one really great line uh, where something has happened to him and, and you know, people are, are gathering around him and he said, don't let them bury me, I'm not dead. And it's a great line. It's, a, it's an awesome tagline. Uh, for that type, for that film, and it en it encompasses really what the film talks about and the subject matter that's explored. Um, but again, I can't recommend this highly enough, just because it's it's a bit different than most of the Wes Craven stuff that people are used to. People are used to like, uh, you know, aside you know, aside from Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, they're interested in somewhat realistic type of stories. Again, Hills Have Eyes is kind of you know, it could happen in reality. It's very unlikely, but it could happen. Uh, you know, Last House on the Left is a bunch of crazy murderers, and Scream is just some guy impersonating a slasher killer and stuff. So there's a lot uh, that he does that doesn't really go into the realm of, you know, fantastical type of stuff. Obviously, Nightmare on Elm Street is a huge jump in that direction, but this is kind of like a little borderline one, and that's why I find it kind of interesting, um, is because it's portrayed in a very real manner, um, and you know, you kind of, you get the idea that these are real people that are in a, a very strange situation. Um, and that's, again, I, that's a, a credit to Wes Craven. And, you know, like I said before, Craven, you know, he's he's one of the masters of horror. You know, that's why he's able to do so many things. He can just find so many different ways to scare you. Um, and in this movie, again, it, it's that warped perception of reality and the idea that this seems real. But there's obviously some fantastical elements that are that are at work that kind of make you you know understand that it's not really real. But you know, in the context of the movie, once you get into it, it just it feels so visceral. Um, 
And again, I think that's why this movie works. There are some jump scares and stuff in there, but they're done tastefully. It's not, you know, one after the other and a bunch of other stuff. But, uh, you know, I like I said before, I can't really recommend this movie higher, um, especially if you're a Craven fan. If you're a Wes Craven fan and you haven't seen this movie, you should look it up. You should get it. You should watch it somehow um, because it's, it's honestly, it's a really great horror movie and it's not uh, your prototypical Wes Craven outing. Um, so... You know, that's just my thoughts on this film. Uh, you know, I saw this a number of years ago. I still need to get it on Blu-ray, unfortunately. I need to find that. But, um, you know, I saw it probably about five or six years ago for the first time, and I, I fell in love with it. I, I really do enjoy the film and the visuals and the stuff that Craven does uh, in the movie and his kind of his exploration of his, his personal touch on, you know, the voodoo uh, culture of Haiti. Um, so, you know, I want to know what you think. Uh, you know, have you seen this movie? Do you like it? Would you like to see it? Are you a fan of Craven? Um and his other works, uh, you know, put your thoughts in the comments below. Again, I like to read them. Um, remember to hit the bell for notifications, hit the like button, subscribe, and remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?